Guys, look at this beautiful recipe I've developed for you. It is a wonderful, delicious recipe based upon a wonderful recipe I had as a kid. Had to redevelop it based on memory. It's a good one. Wait till you taste it. Howdy folks. Welcome to Texas Cooking Today. I'm Stuart Trotter, your host. This is a cooking tutorial for Texas Cooking Today and you've seen what we're about to make. So I'll tell you what, let's get right into it. Well, howdy folks, and welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. On this episode, we're making cream of asparagus soup. Now, what you're watching right now is one of the Texas Cooking Today tutorials where we go into depth on every single one of the methods and techniques involved in making a specific recipe. I also put the same recipe out in a shorter version. It's the previous version to this one. So if you're watching episode, whatever this is, then uh, watch the previous episode and you're watching my short version. Guys, when I was younger, I first tried this soup. I think I was about to go into high school that year and it was fantastic tasting. I didn't really expect it to be that good, but I thought, okay, well, I'll taste it and see what it's like. And that way, you know, I was kind of being polite. Once I tasted it, I wanted the recipe. It was so good. And fortunately, that wonderful lady, she left me with her recipe. And it turns out that her recipe was her, like her grandmother's recipe. So this thing like dates way, way back, all right? So not my recipe, however, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about making this delicious dish. Now guys, this is Cream of Asparagus Soup, Texas Cooking Today tutorial. Something mom taught me was, if you're going to cook, you can't be afraid of flavor. Now let's get in the kitchen and cook it up. Come on. All right, looky there, guys fantastic ingredients. I just love having wonderful, wonderful fresh ingredients to work with. Always, anytime you can, always go with fresh ingredients. That's the way to do it. And your recipes are going to be so good that way. Now for this recipe, we of course have the star of the dish and that's going to be our asparagus. I have a big batch of asparagus and I'm going to teach you just how to prepare this so you don't have anything nasty in your soup, okay? So we're gonna fix up the asparagus just the right way, cook it up just the right way, and it's gonna be wonderful. We also have a yellow onion. We're gonna need a nice sweet onion in this. To spice it up, I've got some garlic and paprika, a bit of salt, some olive oil is even gonna add flavor to this as well. We have some stock and heavy cream. Now, that stock, you can use vegetable stock. You can use chicken stock. You can go with plain water if you want, but it's gonna make the soup a little more bland. So that's the reason we use a stock, is to make a much more rich dish. So, look at it this way. If you want vegetarian, vegetable stock. If you don't care and you just want a little bit of that chicken flavor in the background, Go with the chicken stock, either way it's good. So guys, let's get into preparing our veggies and cook these up. Guys, here we are with our asparagus, our onion, and the garlic. Now we need to fine mince that garlic. We need to dice up our onion, and I wanna show you exactly what to do to take care of asparagus. Asparagus has a woody bottom on it. Now, some of you probably already know this, but for those of you that don't, let me show you something. Sometimes it gets kind of white down here, and that part is rather woody. It's fibrous, and it does not cook well. Let me show you how to know where it gets good, okay? All you have to do is flex the asparagus, and where it snaps naturally, that is where it starts getting tender enough to cook up well. Now, can you still use this? Well, yeah, you can. You need to chop it much shorter, much finer if you do use it. And I would recommend only the green portion when you use these, these little tips, okay? So what I'm gonna do is simply go through and snap all of my asparagus. And all you have to do is just bend it and it does its own thing. Isn't that easy? 
So that's how you know what's good, what's too fibrous, and how to quickly get it done. Now guys, we need to get busy cutting up our asparagus. And let me tell you something, you don't have to be pretty or neat about this because every bit of this is going to get cooked down and then it's going to get pureed, okay? So fear not about making this pretty, but handle that knife with care. Pinch the blade like so. You get better roll control. It won't roll in your hand like this, all right? Curl those fingertips under and let's just make some little one inch cuts just like so. And I want to do that down all of my asparagus. So if you would, please do the same on yours. There we go. Asparagus is ready to be cooked. Now guys, on this onion, the same technique on that knife. Remember, pinch the blade, it gives you better roll control. Keep the fingers turned under when you're cutting. We need to cut not the root end, but the stem end. This is important. If you've never really cut an onion like this, then you need to learn this lesson. This is the exact way that your professional chefs take on handling onions. What they do is they first cut off that stem and then they remove the outermost thinnest layer and sometimes it has a little bit of good onion there but on the thinner spot it doesn't seem to cook up that well. There we go. I gave that a quick rinse. Don't ask me why but I did. Now if we're going to cut an onion and we're going to do it the right way and we're going to get a perfect mince, let me, or excuse me, perfect, perfect dice, let me show you how professional chefs do this. And it is that you have to, you have to look at this not as a two-dimensional perspective. We're not cutting something that's flat. We can't just do two directions of cut and get it right. This is something that's three-dimensional. The same way that, look at it like a cube. If we want to cube this out into small pieces, then we have to cut it on three axes. Three dimensions, three axes, okay? So, first I half it and this gets it easier to control. Boom, straight down. It's easier to control because now it's flat, it won't roll around on me. I take my knife, bring the blade up just a little bit, keeping my fingers together on top, just like this. I bring that knife up about three-eighths of an inch, making sure it's good and level, and gently cut right through that to the root, but not through the root. And I'm gonna bring my knife up a little higher. There we go, and do it once more. And you may be asking yourself, Chef, and I cut through that, okay, so I was a little bit messy, but you may be asking yourself, Chef, why did you do that? Well, here's the thing. If I cut this way and this way, the pieces on the side will be real long, but if I do this, it cuts those pieces down into the squares that they need to be. Now, we cut lengthwise along the onion, just like so. Dink. And then we can make that perfect dice I was telling you about. Fingertips turned under, thumb behind. Boom. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? All perfect dice, guys. Everything's the bright size, cut up just perfect, and all I have left is a simple little root. So you've got a great dicing lesson right there. Let me explain something when cutting. If you're going to make that side cut and you're right-handed, don't make it this way. You saw how I cut away from me? That's because if the knife were to suddenly slip, it pushes away. If I'm cutting like this, it could curve back inward toward me, okay? So you don't want your knife coming towards your gut. Always cut away. All right? Wonderful little lessons for you there. Okay guys, our garlic. Now first, how do you get into the thing? You can either mash down real hard or just push your thumb into the top, break it and pull down and out. Okay, just like so. Now, when I want to do garlic like this, let me show you a little trick. First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and glove up. Now guys, on this, to get the paper off of the clove of garlic, you don't have to go through any exceptional methods. All it takes is breaking the paper loose from what's inside. And that just takes a little simple twisting motion. Thumb and forefinger 
and opposite twisting directions. You hear the crackling? That's that paper breaking free. There it is. Isn't that nice? Isn't that simple? I came up with that when I was a boy and I've stuck with it ever since. It's the easiest way I know of of handling garlic. To prevent my garlic from bobbing around on me, I like to crush it first, okay? So simple, gentle crush, just like so. Then I can go at cutting it down a little bit so it can be minced. Now that simple technique is this. I have my handle that I normally choke up on. I'm holding the back part of it. Let me get down here a little further. When I pull back, put these fingers on top, that gives me that roll control, okay? And puts pressure down on my knife so it controls it. Remember, that thumb, pull him under. Keep him turned under. From there, it's just a matter of practice, and you'll speed up. Isn't that simple? All right, I don't have to go any further than that. My garlic is diced up fine enough to cook in very, very well. And looky there, that is somewhere around maybe a total of a teaspoon. Well guys, if you are watching the tutorial, then what you've just witnessed there is prep work, okay? So what we like to do is get everything cut up, diced up, minced up, or whatever it needs before cooking starts. This is a very important technique, and it's the technique I like to teach on this show. It is very important because what you want to do is to not be distracted when you're cooking. Right now, I need to focus on this, not chopping things up. If I'm busy cutting something else, this is likely to burn or something else can go wrong with it. I don't need that kind of headache in my life, guys. <laughs> I really don't, okay? So always do it this way. Now I put my onions in this pot. I put a little olive oil in there as you've seen. And that was just a couple of tablespoons really. I'm gonna put this heat at a medium heat, okay? I don't need a lot of heat in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sweat these onions. We're just trying to make them tender. This will be somewhere around eight to 10 minutes in the cooking. They will become slightly translucent, somewhat yellowish in color. And when that happens, then we move right on to the next step, which is getting our liquid in there and cooking up the asparagus and the garlic. Now guys, don't put your garlic in there at this time because if you do, bad, bad idea. That garlic can overcook in this particular process, giving it a somewhat bitter effect. We want it in the background and we want it cooked lightly, so we boil it. Let's get a lid on this so it sweats. Now folks, when you're cooking stuff up like this, remember to keep an eye on it. I have been stirring this about every, oh, two minutes or so. And a moment ago, I noticed a little bit of browning starting down in here. So what I did, I lowered the heat just slightly, added a little more oil, and there we go. And just keep checking that every couple of minutes. Right now we're up to about six minutes of cooking time. Guys, it has now been 10 minutes of sweating these. I'm getting a little too much browning, but that's okay. We're done with that process. I just need to go in with my stock at this point. So the second part of this cooking operation begins. When it comes to asparagus, it cooks quickly, guys. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring this stock up in temperature. All right, not a problem there. And when it starts to simmer, then I'm gonna put my asparagus in there, bring it back up to a simmer again, and at that point we start timing. Asparagus should take around, if it's like this size, which is pencil size asparagus, that should take around seven, eight minutes to cook. If it's really fat asparagus, it may take as long as 10, and if it's that really, really thin stuff, it could be as short as five minutes, okay? So your cooking time is gonna vary on this. Any time at this point, you can go ahead and put your spices in there, and that's what I'm gonna do. Go ahead and get my garlic. Remember that garlic was never intended to be a prominent flavor, but just a background flavor that adds to the richness of this dish. And the paprika, as I mentioned, about a quarter 
of a teaspoon. So right in there. Again, slightly warming the dish, but almost imperceivable as to what it was that caused that warm flavor. And about a half teaspoon of that salt. Guys, it looks like our liquid has broken a boil. That's a good sign. All right. And look, when something like that happens, you don't have to be in a big rush. If it boils for a couple of minutes, it's not gonna hurt anything. Remember those onions, we want those to be as tender, as soft, and cooked down as possible. All of this is gonna be pureed in a little bit, so it needs to be cooked well, but not overcooked, okay? Well, the onion, not a big deal. It can cook for a long time. It can handle a lot of heat. Okay, we have our boil. Let me put this in. There we go. We're gonna bring that back to a boil. When it returns to a boil, I'm going to cover it, reduce the temperature to low, and simmer it for eight minutes. This just now broke a boil, so it gets covered, and I reduce my temperature to a low, and turn on my timer for eight minutes. For those of you that are watching this cook along tutorial, you're gonna need a few extra items. So let's take a good close look at all that you're gonna be needing in just a moment to make this soup. Now guys, what we're gonna need in the way of extra equipment, you're gonna need another pot. Generally, most blenders aren't gonna be able to process that much liquid at once. So I recommend that we divide this into two batches and process both of those separately. So you need a separate pot or something to pour part of that soup in during that processing. You also need a strainer. Now there's different size strainers. The smaller diameter one generally have a finer screen. And those that are larger than this generally have a looser screen. Go for a medium like this. Now if you are one of those who in the past purchased a food mill because I said on one of my shows, hey, get a food mill. These things are great. You'll love them. Still wonderful items. If you want to use your food mill, it works. Use the small sieve. Pour your soup through it and into your second pan and then simply mill the vegetables down into it. You'll get a fantastic quality soup that way. So your food mill works and so does the blender. Now, Today, since I have electricity, I'm going to be using my blender, all right? I recommend if you don't have one of these, you can also use a hand blender, or like I said, a food mill. Now guys, when it comes to handling this, I'm not gonna tell you to pour it anywhere. We're gonna ladle this out. One ladle at a time, I'm just gonna put this right into my blender. Guys, I think I have roughly half of that puree in the blender. Now I'm gonna go ahead. Something you need to remember, if you're gonna use one of these, put your hand on top. Otherwise, they can shoot the lid off and spray you. I'm gonna pulse it a couple of times and then turn it on. That was only about a minute and a half. I have a nice liquid. All I need to do is take this, pour it right through my strainer. Now, let's get that here. Now I can take the rest of my soup and process that the same way I did the first. Now guys, when you're trying to get a liquid to go through a strainer, sometimes you just got to work it through and that's where a spatula comes in handy with one of these. So I'm going to work that through there. As you can see, everything is well processed. Okay. So we've got a wonderful, good quality soup here. So as you see, by using the better parts of my asparagus, I don't end up with a whole lot of fiber left over, or I should say a whole lot of roughage left over. It's rather minuscule what I have left on this, okay? So now we have this very, very beautiful, sublime looking liquid here. So it's time to work in our cream. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, any good chef needs to stop 
and check what they have made. So give your soup a little taste. The flavors are divine, totally divine. I'm going to put just a tiny bit more salt, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. And guys, I have to admit, I'm one of those that likes the flavor of my chilies. So I am going to go ahead and add a little bit of paprika at this point. And what that does for me is it just gives me a little bit of a flavor bump in a unique way. Because that was paprika not cooked into the broth and it's gonna flavor it just slightly different. All I need to do is bring this up in temperature until it just begins to break into a, a low simmer or just starting to boil. At that point, I can drop the heat and it is finished. It's ready to go. Guys, I've just turned off the heat to this. You could hear it just starting to, to bubble a little on the bottom. And I said, okay, we're there. That's the temperature it's perfect at. Now look at that. Look at the creamy, smooth quality of that soup. No specks, no particles, no problems. That is top quality right there, guys. So what we're gonna do is get this dished up and we're gonna enjoy it. Okay, guys, the ingredients that we used in this recipe. One pound of asparagus is where we start. One quart of stock. You can use a vegetable stock, you can use a chicken stock. For this show, we're teaching to use a vegetable stock Take your pick though. Three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. Now, anybody that asks, can you substitute other things? Yes, you can. You can go half and half, milk, almond milk, whatever suits your fancy. But I like the rich, full-bodied flavor that you get with heavy cream. So that's what's going in this one. We have one small onion. This is a yellow onion. I want that for the nice, sweet flavor it gives us. One clove of the garlic, not this whole bulb, just one clove. A quarter of a teaspoon to a half teaspoon of salt. A quarter teaspoon of paprika. And a little bit of olive oil that I'm going to be cooking that onion in. And a little bit to finish up the dish at the very end. So guys, there it is. Beautiful, beautiful ingredients for an absolutely beautiful dish. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simply ladle some of this up and get it into my dish. Oh, this is going to be good. There we are. Now you notice when I handle my foods, I want to be very delicate with what I'm doing. You don't want to just slop your food out there in front of people, guys. That's really, really nasty. So you want to have it in the bowl clean not slopped up on the sides, not, not ugly, okay? And then also, I try to choose a bowl that's going to look good with what I'm doing. And so that is very important to me in the whole presentation of a dish like this. If I'm going to garnish, I want to use a little paprika. So what I want to do is put it between my fingers and watch what I do, I rub my fingers together and it falls gently. And that's what I'm going to do over the top of this. I want it to be random, but I don't want it to be streaks or huge clumps. So hold it high and gently rub my fingers together. See how that does? Isn't that beautiful? No more. Very simple, guys. Very, very simple. When you garnish something that is this wonderful, you need to keep it simple. Do not overdo it. If you do, you pretty much, well, you're just taking away from what is already fantastic. Oh, time to try it. This is my favorite part of every single show, getting to enjoy what I make. Oh yeah. Mm. As I make a mess, oh, this is good. Mm. Folks, when you try this, you're going to be making a mess too. Oh God, that's just delicious. Guys, I've been sitting here enjoying this. <laughs> Once you try yours, you're not going to be able to resist. 
Mm. Oh God, that's so good. I'm sure the minute you make this recipe and you try it, you're going to be so excited about sharing it with other people. It's so good. This one is banging delicious. All right. Do not hesitate to try it. And I'd like to say thank you so very much to everyone who's watched this show. To my subscribers, extra special thank you guys. Thank you so much for that. Folks, if you haven't subscribed, please consider that. I've got fresh recipes coming out every single Thursday, okay? I do post on Thursday mornings as a general rule. Every once in a while I'm off, but not by much. So if you would, subscribe, click that bell. You'll be notified when there's a new recipe out. And guys, there's a lot of good stuff coming. So again, thank you very much for watching. Please click like, drop a comment. I like to answer those. And folks, one last thing, just have a good day. Bye-bye. Well, there it is, folks. Texas Cooking Today video tutorial. I do appreciate you coming to my show and watching. If you would, please go to my channel, check out some of the other good stuff I have there. And again, thank you. Thank you very much for watching.